Hello and welcome to week three of Rhetoric 3326. I'm Dr. Harris and I just wanted to talk a little bit in this video about um, follow-up from week two, discussion board, um, and activity, and then um, introduction to the activity that we'll be doing in week three. We're only doing one activity in week three, uh, and this activity should set you up for working on the proposal, which we're going to be finishing in week four. So first of all, week two, um, I went into everybody's posts who posted by the deadline, their initial post by the deadline, and gave some detailed feedback about um, what you'll need to do to revise and get ready for the portfolio. And this brainstorming discussion board is really the place where you can work out kind of the bugs in this idea for your project um, for the formal report before you start getting into the proposal and getting into the higher stakes activities. So I sent out an announcement um, earlier this week that I want to kind of harken back to. Um, this is the front page of our course. Um, staying focused and local. So when we write reports in school writing, what we tend to do is pick some kind of topic that's very broad about which we can find a lot of information, but that doesn't really make any kind of actual substantial change. Um, like with the PowerPoint presentation that um, in week one and two that was the introduction to professional writing. Professional writing is different in that the most important relationship is the relationship between the audience and the text or the audience and the document that you are going to provide. So in all of your um, initial topic ideas audience needed to take the center stage um, identifying a specific audience, understanding that you're writing about a concrete problem that does have a solution. And there are five um, students who I emailed you and are also in this um, announcement on the home page who had really good specific ideas that are perfect for this project. So I'd recommend that you go through and read their initial posts uh, as you develop and refine your ideas. That's the, exactly the kind of idea that I was hoping um, you would come up with for the local and specific con portion of this assignment. And I'm going to go over there really quickly to that. Um, on our home page, uh, under the report, if you just click on that, you'll be able to review um, the criteria for the assignment. And these three criteria in particular are going to be important because you need to identify a particular problem and identify both that it exists, which seems kind of like a no-brainer, but some people might not see what you see um, being a problem as necessarily problematic. Um, and you'll need to convince them of the seriousness of the problem, if this has actual repercussions. Um, and then in the, in the work that we're doing in weeks three through week 10, you'll be researching those potential solutions, um, identifying the aspects of the problem, um, and proposing that solution. It needs to be a problem that can be addressed and a solution that can be implemented to, to fix that problem. So if you choose something, like I gave the example, um, the heart attack report um, that I said to steer clear of, we can't fix heart attacks. Like there's nothing no human can do, and there's nothing any human can do to prevent heart attacks, period. Like some of it's genetic, it's diet and exercise related. So we know it's a problem, but there's no, there's no real solution. Or we know the solution, diet and exercise, and it's very difficult to implement. What you could do to modify that, to make it more local and specific, is perhaps you work at a business or you are involved in a school or an organization who could buy a defibrillator to keep on a particular premises to help for those people who go into cardiac arrest, to train people to be able to use it, and to cut down on the number of fatalities from heart attacks at your work. Um, I've worked with a lot of firefighters in the past who've um, made proposals such as this for a particular piece of equipment because of their particular station or locale or a need to implement that kind of um, specific solution to a problem. So it's okay to take something um, and modify it that you already have if you're really interested in that topic. Just make sure that you identify a specific audience for that who can make those changes. Um, and then be sure that you can complete identifying the problem and posing a solution within the space of not very much room. We only have about four body uh, pages um, if you look at the example in the textbook in which to get the solution or the problem identified and the solution uh, put in place and that's really not a lot of room. 
Um, I want to give one more example before we move into week three to talk about how in practice this has worked um, for me and hopefully this will give you an example of what types of writing you might want to look at um, and I'll give you one I'm working on right now. Um, so I'm a professor at UALR. Uh, my department chair has asked me to investigate the possibilities of putting either the bachelors of arts in professional and technical writing or the master of arts in professional and technical writing uh, fully online. So we have some online classes right now but we don't have a really fully online program for either one of those. So he wants me to research and investigate um, how would it be feasible to do those things. So the problem I'm looking at um, is creating a good program. Like we don't want to have just a kind of patched together program. I need to know the best way of implementing either a bachelor's or a master's program online. Um, and then my formal report, the one that I will submit to him in a week or two um, in real life, is my solution, the step-by-step -step solutions I see based on my research into how we could I, how we could address the problem of moving those courses um, and those programs online. So I'm not addressing all master's programs. I'm not addressing all online education. I'm not addressing all professional and technical writing programs. I'm just addressing our professional and technical writing program at our institution and how this might work to put that online. So there's another concrete example. Hopefully, in, instead of addressing all of one issue, I'm just picking a particular location, a particular audience for a particular piece of an issue. Um, so as you work on developing those topics into more concrete, specific, local um, ideas, um, send me an email or continue to work brainstorming with your classmates on kind of narrowing and focusing those topics. So on to week three. Um, week three, we only have one assignment. Um, it is an important one. Uh, you can either access it through the assignments button in your course. It's the 3.1 database and search engine assignment. Or you can go to the schedule in our course, uh, and it's also linked in through that area. So we'll click on that right now um, and visit that. There are a few things I'd like you to read out of the textbook before you get started. The first of which um, is chapter three, which talks about research and technical writing in general. Um, and then as you get into the specific pieces of the assignment, you'll also want to read the section um, about periodical databases, um, again, just to make sure that you understand what those are. Um, and then when you start to format, you'll want to read um, the instructions for formatting electronic resources. And you can choose either APA or MLA to cite in um, for this project. Um, both of those are covered in the textbook. Because you'll primarily be working with electronic sources in this class, I'm assuming, most of you will probably want to do your research online. Um, that's an important part to understand um, to get started. What the assignment itself is, is starting to gather the research that you'll need to be credible to your specific audience. In technical writing and these kinds of recommendation reports, because you're writing to an audience that can make a change, um, they're probably someone in a position of authority. And people in positions of authority want strong evidence-based research in order to make those kinds of decisions. So for example, um, if I'm writing my report about the online master's program, um, I might be tempted to go on to Google to Google online master's programs and pull up the first couple of, of things that come up. So let me just do that and see what happens. So online master's programs. And when I do that, what I'm going to get because Google works on a particular algorithm are probably two types of things. Number one will be sponsored sites or people wanting to sell me, want me to take an online master's program, um, or two news paper articles or sources that just kind of talk about online programs in general. Um, neither of these are good f sources for your project. Um, if your person who you're writing to, your audience, can also Google it and just find information, they don't need you to write the report. What they're going to be looking for is more specific, in-depth, researched information. Um, so you might start here just to get ideas, to kind of get a map of the issue in general, um, but these are not the sources you're going to be using in your project. So you're not going to be using news articles, uh, you're not going to be using um, things that are .org, or not .org, I'm sorry, um, .com, because they're probably going to be commercial sites. Um, mastersdegreeonline.org is kind of interesting because it's an organization um, that's kind of devoted to getting people into master's degrees, but it's still probably going to be too general to have any real 
good and concise information that's going to be helpful in my report. Um, so what I'd like you to do with the 3.1 project is to investigate sources that are in two areas you probably don't use very frequently. Um, and these sources will help you build that last section of your proposal in week four. So doing a really good job in week three is going to make week four um, a lot easier. Um, so let's look at the assignment itself. So re after you read the chapters in the textbook, you're going to be locating five sources for your project. I'd like three of the sources to be from a library database from the Ottenheimer Library at UALR, um, and the other two to be from Google Scholar. And I'm a little bit flexible with this because I know some of you that are doing really local um, reports, um, you might need to be also finding more local sources or local information. And that's fine as well, and you can do that um, in addition to this. What this activity is doing is just getting you familiar and comfortable with the kind of um, peer-reviewed, uh, researched information that will need to be a, a component of your report. Um, so shoot for three of them from the library, three of them from Google Scholar, if at all possible. Um, Email me if you're having trouble with finding those sources um, or if you need to use different sources that are equally credible um, but don't necessarily come from those um, particular places. This is just a good starting point for you. So um, first we'll be finding the sources. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The uh, library um, at UALR can be found at this URL, so just ualr.edu backslash library. Um, and what we're looking at is the article and databases section. So you'll click on that to link once you get to the library. Um, and you can display them by letter, so the database is by letter. If you happen to know a database that you need to use, you can uh, search for it that way. But you can also uh, display by subject. Um, so I don't really know a database I want to use for this online master's research. But I do know that it falls within the scope of um, either English or education. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say education first because online teaching and learning is a little bit broader than just uh, the subject of English uh, and I can click submit here. Um, one final note if you really are struggling you can contact a reference librarian talk to them about what your what your topic is what you're researching and they can really direct you to specific databases that you'll need to use. I know they have a, a live chat feature that's on um, most days you can do that or email them and they should get back to you fairly quickly they're very good about doing that so I'm going to go into education and click submit this is a list of articles and databases on the UALR library system that deal with um, education um, I'm familiar with some of these not as familiar with others but what I'm going to be looking for in particular is research that deals with online master's programs developing good strong online master's programs because that's what I'm hoping to propose for our department so dissertations I am probably not going to use education research I want research articles I want ones that have studies that have substance because my department chair is definitely going to be interested in looking at previous successful projects um, so I'm going to click on Education Research Complete. Um, and then I don't know how comfortable you are with Boolean searches, um, but Boolean searches help you to limit or restrict the things that you're going to find. If I just type in online education, again, very broad, I'm going to get everything. What I'm really looking for is just um, online um, and master's programs and course development. So I'm hoping that doing that is going to come back with some more specific articles. I'm going to hit search and you can make this as specific as you need to or want to or feel comfortable with um, selecting a field. But I'm just going to kind of get a sense of what other people have done in master's programs as they've moved them online, what kind of things are going to be important for me to look at so I can set up my solution for this report I'm doing. Um, the first one won't always be the best one. In this case, it looks like this one is um, actually along the lines of what I'm looking for. So development of an online orientation for an instructional technology master's program. Part of what I might want to recommend to uh, my department chair is we need an orientation for students who are going into a fully online um, graduate program. So I can go in here. It offers a PDF full text. Um, I know that it's reliable because it's in a journal I recognize because I do work in this area. Um, but if you're also looking at um, 
finding the most reliable sources, you can limit them to um, scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. And that will just give you those journals who aren't publishing just anyone who submits, but actually have a revision and review process that's fairly comprehensive. Um, luckily, mine is still up there when I do that. Um, so I'm going to probably use pull this PDF full text um, and use this in my report, I, which I'm really writing over the next couple weeks. Um, so I'm going to look at what they did with this orientation, um, see if there are parts I can pull from this to offer as my solution um, for the problem that I'm researching. So uh, library databases are one place um, you can look. The other is Google Scholar, and not many people might know um, about this. I'm sure there's an easier way of getting to it, um, but I always just type Google Scholar into my Firefox bar and it pulls up because um, it's understanding what I want. Google Scholar is kind of like a library database search engine for Google. So if you type into regular Google, you're going to get um, an algorithm that relies on tr web traffic, on how much they, particular organizations or companies have paid or worked to get their name more recognized online. Google Scholar doesn't work with that same algorithm. They're working more with, um, still with frequency, but it's more frequency of citations and articles um, and frequency of um, other scholars who've noted these kinds of works. So I'm going to do the same kind of search um, online. Um, and master's program, hmm, I can't type, and development to see what happens here. Um, one of the, l not bad, but not necessarily great um, elements of this for me is that Frequently science articles will come up at the top of the list because they're more frequently cited in other articles. So if you look here, see this has been cited by 1,300 people, which is great for the Google search, um, but it has um, um, not much to do with what I'm actually talking about. Um, and the also 1996, in online education, 1996 was um, Stone Age. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, let's say since 2010, I want to narrow it down a little bit um, to see if I can get it a little bit closer to what I need. Um, Google Scholar will pull up a range of sources. So this looks like it's a, a government document, which is interesting. This, these are books. Um, this says there's a PDF of the book from Harvard University. You might see over here in this right column, full text. Um, examples or copies of whatever you're looking for, which is great. Um, these are not looking really great for what I need. Um, here's one. I'm comparing the impact of online and face-to-face -face professional development in the context of curriculum implementation. implementation. So professional development is one of the components that I'm going to be looking at. We want our master's students to have good professional development opportunities. Um, so I'm going to click on that. Um, and sometimes you'll be lucky with this, sometimes not. Um, this has the full text PDF for free, so I'm going to be able to use that. The Journal of Teacher Education is a highly respected journal in what I do. Um, if it wasn't full text on Google Scholar, I could take and copy the title of that and go back into my library database to see if they had it full text at the library. So let's suppose it wasn't full text online. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, I'm going to select a field and say that this is the title to make it more specific and search to see. Um, and yes, there it is. So it actually um, says it's going to give me full text through link source, um, which is probably the same search that I just did. Um, and so I can go look in this area for that, which is not actually giving me. That's weird. So I can find it online, but not at the library. That happens sometimes. Um, so that's searching um, for the 3.1 assignment. Once you select five reliable sources, um, here's what I would like you to do. Prepare your citations for your uh, week four proposal. Um, and this is all laid out in this section of that description. Um, so once you've located the sources, cite them in MLA or AP format. So the first piece of your um, component of your work is going to be a citation. And then under each citation, you're going to annotate the source. And you're going to do pr three particular things. So you're going to write a brief description of what the source contains. So what about that source? Um, what does it do? What is it saying? And that's a sentence or two that kind of summarizes in very broad strokes that um, article or 
uh, source that you're using. Then a brief description of why the source is useful for your project. So what particular piece of that source are you going to use to help either identify your problem or identify a solution? Um, and then last of all, describe why the source is reliable. And you're going to use the information from that strategy section on page 35 of your textbook. And that was in your reading um, in that earlier section. So how do you know that this is a good source for your particular audience? Um, is it peer reviewed? Is it an academic journal? Is it a research report from the government? Um, there's a whole list of things in that strategy section that help you to identify what makes this a reliable source. And I'd like to do do I would like you to identify that as the third step of that annotation. Um, finally, you'll complete this activity in Google Docs just like you did with the 2.2 assignment. Uh, make sure the Google Doc is through the UALR email system um, because I can't accept reports or assignments from outside that um, for privacy issues. Um, be sure I can edit the document, uh, make sure I have editing uh, capability, and then you should be able to, once I've responded to this document, basically do the revisions and cut and paste that right into your proposal. So this is actually starting to draft um, toward that proposal in week four. Um, review the think about it section. Um, be sure that you take into account the um, elements that I identify there to help you complete the assignment. Um, especially in weeks one and two in some areas, I noticed that people were um, submitting particularly discussion board posts that didn't necessarily meet the criteria of the assignment. Um, and because audience awareness is such a huge component of the entire class, identifying and meeting the needs of the audience will be important. Um, so these think about it give you specific tools and tips to help you be more successful with those assignments. Um, I think that's it for me. I know this is a little bit longer video because I'm going over some more specific things. Thank you for your time and please let me know if you have any questions either about the website, uh, the assignment, or previous assignments um, in the course. Um, have a great week and I look forward to hearing from you um, and reading about the sources that you found in week three. Bye!